Okay, in this video, I want to show you a couple of different things with um, Glade and LT Spice. So, what I have um, prepared is a library that has a couple of different cells in it. First, what I want to talk about is um, layout for a capacitor. So, this um, is a poly poly capacitor, it comprises basically three things. So this um, thing in the background is just poly 1. And this orange blob here is uh, poly 2. And that's the bottom plate and the top plate of the capacitor. And then um, something called a recognition layer, which uh, tells the extractor that this is not just a random place where poly 2 is crossing over poly 1 but uh, we, we intend for this to be a capacitor. So this is capacitor ID layer here. And so you can see this kind of grayish thing, which um, is actually little capacitor symbols um, here. Um, that's the capacitor ID layer that basically says that this region of poly and poly two overlap is intended to be a capacitor. And I've drawn this to be about a two picofarad capacitor. Um, and uh, the specific capacitance of poly 1 and poly 2 capacitors uh, is about about 0.9 femtofarads per square micron. And so um, in order to figure out how big to make this to make it 2 picofarads, you basically have to say 2 picofarads divided by 0.9 femtofarads per square micron to get a certain number of square microns, and then you have to decide what kind of rectangular shape you'd like to um, put this in to, to give you that area. And then here I've got some poly 2 contacts and I've got poly 1 contacts and metal. And so if I extract this cell, let's see, it's under desktop, glade. You can see that it extracts as C0, and if we were to uh, export a CDL file, um, let's see, please specify a CDL file to export to. That would be a good thing, wouldn't it? Got to give it a file name. Export CDL, and here if we go out here we can see our capacitor.cdl file and you can see that this uh, gets extracted into a subcircuit but there's the capacitor C C0 bottom top those are the pin names that I gave to the top and bottom plates and you can see the capacitance is 2.03 picofarads um, it also looks like it extracts the area and the perimeter. Um, and so uh, that is, that's a capacitor. Um, so the other thing I've got in this, in this library is a current mirror differential amplifier. And uh, my intention here is twofold. It's to show you uh, an example of um, a reasonable analog layout with uh, some common centroid uh, geometries for the transistors and um, a stacked arrangement where I'm sharing source drain regions. So um, just to give you a sense for uh, what what is what here, um, this down here is a bias transistor and um, a diode connected bias transistor that form an NMOS current mirror and I've chopped each of these uh, two transistors in my simple current mirror up into um, eight pieces. Uh, you can see here, here's VBN, and this coming in along the bottom in metal one. And you can see here's a diode connection, here's another diode connection. So these two devices are in parallel and form one piece of the diode connected transistor. This is the other uh, piece of that diode connected transistor in this group. And you can see there's a, a second 
sort of replica of that over here. And so there's another pair here and another pair here. And then the actual bias transistor for the diff pair is this pair of transistors, this pair of transistors, this pair, and uh, this pair right here. And so all of these transistors share a common centroid about right here. You can see that this is the common source node. The drain of the bias transistors are these regions down here. And then the source of the two diff pair transistors is here. In the case of the diff pair transistors, I've got four fingers or strips for each of the two transistors. This is the non or this is the non-inverting input, these four right here. And this is the um, inverting input. This is a PMOS current mirror. This is a second PMOS current mirror. This is an NMOS current mirror. And so you can see, um, actually it's maybe, maybe it's easiest if I extract it. Um, and that way we can see the nets. So let me run the extractor and um, make sure that I'm in full here. So if I select this net, you can see this is the positive input comes in on these four gates. The drains of these four transistors get connected to the input to this current mirror. The output to this current mirror goes onto the output net, which is here. And the inverting input is this group down here. The drains of the inverting input transistors go up to this PMOS current mirror. The output of this PMOS current mirror feeds into the input of this NMOS current mirror, and its output also connects to the output. So you can see, um, you can see the nets here. You know, this is the this is the common source node of the, the diff pair, and the drain of the bias transistor. Um, this is the ground net. This is the VDD net. And I guess I should also mention that back in the layout, I've named the, these pins VP, VN, VNEG, VPAUSE, V, VB, and VOUT. And I've labeled them in the metal one pin layer. Um, and so that way when they get extracted, if I query this net name, you can see that this net is called uh, VPAUS and it has a pin name which is also VPAUS. And so um, in order to do a post layout simulation involving uh, this cell, what I can do is I can uh, go over here to File, um, Export, Export CDL. And you can see that I have all these uh, pin names here. And now what I want to do is um, actually order these a little differently because this is the order in which they'll appear in the pin list. And I've already made a symbol, and so I've got these in a particular order in my, um, in my symbol. And so uh, first I want, first in the list I want VP, second in the list I want VN, third in the list I want V out, fourth in the list I want VB, I want V pause, and V neg last. I want to use true spice format. Um, I want to not call this capacitor.cdl, but cmdiffamp.cdl. And now if I click on OK, and I go over here, I can see what this looks like. So you can see that this, this gives me a subcircuit called CM diffamp with the pins VP, VN, V out, VB, V pause, and V neg in that order. And then these are all the transistors. Um, the model names are C5NMOS and C5PMOS, which match our model names for LTSPICE. You can see that not only do we have width and length parameters here, but we also have area of the source, 
perimeter of the source, area of the drain, and perimeter of the drain. So um, the extractor um, script that I used uh, does not include uh, parasitic capacitances. Um, I will eventually push out a uh, extractor script that does have parasitic capacitances. So this doesn't have parasitic capacitances to the substrate for the different uh, wiring layers. But what it does have is um, the parasitic sort of diode capacitances involved in the source drain diffusions, uh, as well as the gate capacitances of the transistors. So if we do a simulation, a post layout simulation, um, the actual uh, sort of size and shape of the source drain diffusions will be, in some sense, incorporated into the simulation. So now I've got this uh, CDL net list where a subcircuit has been created that corresponds to my layout. And I want to show you how uh, to hook that up to a symbol in LT Spice. So this is the same current mirror diff amp symbol that I used in uh, the last tutorial that I did. Um, I've changed it a little bit. Uh, one of the things I've done is I've changed the pin names to correspond to um, the pin labels that I put in my layout. So VP, netlist order one, V, what's V, I use VN, I think I used VN, VN, netlist order two, and I had V out, netlist order three, VB netlist order 4, V pause netlist order 5, and V neg netlist order 6. Just save that and verify that my CDL file has VN in here instead of VM. Okay, so now um, I've created a schematic that involves that symbol. Oh, I guess there's one more thing I forgot to mention about that symbol. So this symbol, I also had to change one more thing, and that is um, under attributes, I had to make it a block instead of a cell. Block instead of a cell. And I had to put in the prefix here x in the, the value uh, cm diff amp. And so now um, I have a follower connected uh, cm diff amp here with a two picofarad load capacitance and I'm push, pushing in 100 nanoamps into my VB diode connected transistor which is now a part of the cell and I've put dot include cm diff amp dot cdl here which basically says include that netlist that we've extracted using Glade uh, into the netlist for this simulation and so if we run this we can probe the output and there's the Bodhi plot, which is similar to the one that we saw when we simulated the schematic. Now one thing you can't do with this as it stands because it's not a subcircuit is you can't go into that and probe this, the nodes in the subcircuit, which is um, kind of unfortunate, but that's kind of the way it works. And so you can see that the corner frequency here is maybe Oh, I don't know, in the range of a few hundred kilohertz here. So that's how you do post layout simulation and how you lay out um, a capacitor. One thing I did want to kind of show you here um, is kind of a, the sense of scale. So um, these transistors here are meant to be the same size as you used in your folded cascode amplifier in MP3. Um, they are each uh, six lambda long and um, they are all of the sort of effective transistors are 120 lambda wide or uh, 1.8 microns long and 36 microns wide. 
And just to give you a sense of scale, what I'm going to do is create a new cell. I'll call this, um, I don't know, foo. And I'm going to instance, create an instance of my capacitor. Relaunch Glade. And let's open up our library again. Okay, let's create a new cell. Okay, so there's my capacitor. It's a little hard to appreciate how big that is. But we also can create alongside of that an instance of our FAMP. And you can kind of get a sense for scale here. So these transistors are pretty good size. Uh, especially compared to some of the digital transistors that you were using in, in some of the earlier machine problems uh, to make uh, the D flip-flop and things like that. But capacitors are kind of larger still. So this two picofarad capacitor is just about as large as all of these transistors. Depending on how you count, there's a lot of transistors here. So even though these are analog transistors and are pretty good size, um, the capacitor is still the thing that kind of is the feature that dominates the layout. Anyway, so that's, um, that's all I wanted to do for now.